Yeah, yeah, I know. This has been done many times before, so what's the point? Well, I wanted to challenge myself to learn game dev stuff, and I also wanted to get more familiar with Mono Game. You know, the library that I'm using. So if you've watched other Minecraft clone videos, you'll probably know that they all sort kind of the same. We get a window, make a cube, then get a 3D camera working. Then fail at loading textures, but eventually get it done right. And also yeah, make it pixelated because right now it's blurry. We then render another block and then a bunch of them and realize that something is totally wrong and I have to fix my code again. Eventually get that done and well realize I have something else to fix because not all of the blocks are being rendered. Now that we're rendering a bunch of blocks, we need to render them efficiently, which is the part that took me the most time. So the most logical thing to do next was procrastination. So for the procrastination step, I used Imgui to help me with debugging. I also changed the textures because I thought they were ugly, and played around with the noise function because my brain was like why not, and I did split the cubes into chunks and subchunks that are 16 by 16 by 16. Here's a bunch of things that I've done before starting to optimize the mesh building. Applying the noise to each subchunk getting those spikes. Applying the noise to a whole chunk but still with no tweaks and getting some more spikes. Tweaking the noise and trying to generate an infinite world which didn't really work. And finally I got an infinite world to generate but with a lot of lag. Then I started doing small optimizations like trying to reuse objects or trying to use smaller variable types to use less memory. And a lot of those small optimizations were done throughout the making of this Minecraft clone, which by themselves didn't help that much. But all of them combined definitely helped. Small optimizations aside, I first started working on frustum calling, which means that I tried to reduce the number of draw calls by not rendering what is behind the camera. It took me a few attempts, but as you can see, I eventually got it right. After that, I spent a lot of time trying to cull the faces of blocks that were not visible. This is a really important improvement, because instead of drawing millions of vertices, we only end up drawing a few hundred thousand. During this time, I went back and forth multiple times with the infinite world generation, because it was pretty hard to debug, but eventually I got it right on a small scale. I also needed to deal with not rendering faces that are located at the edges of the subchunk. And I was also doing something very wrong that I didn't realize until later, because my memory usage was astronomically high. I played a bit with multithreading to speed up the mesh building, but that only helped partially because I still had a lot of lag spikes when generating the world, so at least I was getting around 30 FPS. But what I wasn't getting was a like and subscribe from you, so do that so my FPS can improve further. Eventually I got the part of not rendering faces at the subchunk edges right, but now I had a problem with the way the world was generated. And the solution to that is to actually generate the chunks in two steps. The first step is to generate the blocks data and the next step is to build the mesh of those blocks. And to ensure that the mesh is built correctly, you need neighboring chunks to generate the block data before you build the mesh. So the edges of the chunk are displayed correctly in the first try. I messed this step a lot of times and sometimes I even got some cool patterns to show up, but they were not what I actually wanted. After I reached a somewhat satisfying result, it was time for me to improve the memory usage. I did also realize that the noise function that I was using was pretty slow, so I changed that too. While trying to fix the memory usage problems, I broke a lot of stuff that I did previously regarding the mesh generation. Because I went from using a dictionary of vector tree and blocks to a simple one-dimensional array with blocks, and I had to rewrite the function that determined if a block face is visible from scratch. To reduce the memory further, I ended up making my own vertex and pixel shader, so I broke even more things in the process. And while this and a lot of other things that I didn't mention helped a lot, which like halved my memory usage, they were still not the main problem. After all of that, I made it so the insides of the block faces themselves don't get rendered. To debug things earlier, I also added some information to be displayed about the number of vertices and indices that were being rendered. And while I was working on rewriting my isFace visible function, I realized that something was very wrong about them. They were always at the maximum possible value. And well, indeed, that was the length of my vertex and index buffers. But the question was why? Because clearly, I wasn't rendering that many even when testing with a single subchunk. So after doing the math and testing a bit, I realized that the problem was that I was using fixed size arrays for my buffers. So even if they were not filled, I was still wasting so much memory because I was initializing them with the maximum possible length in mind. So I changed that to list, which took down my memory usage to like 500 megabytes. The next thing that I wanted to address were the lag spikes from generating the world. And to fix that, I first made it so that chunks wouldn't get generated until you cross the chunk border, which caused even worse lag spikes until I also deferred the rendering generation and mesh building across multiple frames. This works because less work is done per frame, so the GPU doesn't freeze while waiting for the CPU to finish doing all the work. And combining this with a few tweaks related to how I multi-threaded the mesh building, I got a super smooth experience. Another thing that I did was to generate the chunks starting with the ones that are 
are nearest to the player. And the result is that now I can go full speed without the chunk generation lagging behind or tanking the FPS. And just for the fun of it, I also tried the render distance of 32, which meant that I had over 3000 chunks, with barely dropping below 100 FPS. I forgot to mention, but somewhere in between I also added the crosshair and used the raycast to determine the block that I'm looking at, because I needed the information to help me with debugging. But now, since I had this information, I also started implementing breaking and placing blocks. And the only challenge here is that I needed to update the meshes of the neighboring chunks if I was breaking or placing blocks near the border. Then I added glass to start working on transparent blocks, and aside from the fact that I was stupid and saved the texture atlas with a black background, I actually did have some problems with transparency, which I solved by separating the chunk meshes in two, one for opaque blocks and one for the transparent blocks. Then I sorted the chunks and subchunks based on the player position and rendered them starting with the furthest ones. I also added water and made it so it gets generated in the world, which made everything look a lot better. One thing that I didn't do was to also sort the blocks in the subchunk that the player is in, so there are still some small issues with with transparency within the same subchunk. Lastly, I added some fake lighting by darkening the block faces depending on their direction. For example, the sides on the north would be darker than the sides on the south. Same with top and bottom and east and west. And as a small detail, I lowered the position of the water vertices just so that the water is not on the same level as the rest of the blocks. A few other things that I didn't address yet were non-critical bugs, like how my camera rotates slightly even if I don't move the mouse, how you can actually place blocks on the corners of other blocks, or other optimizations that could be done like greedy meshing, or packing the vertex information into smaller values to further decrease the memory usage, and also features that the game is clearly lacking. I also skipped a lot of details because I had a lot of bugs, and I tried to keep the video as short as I could. This project was a lot of fun and there are so many other things that I can add to it, which for sure I will at some point because I have an entire list. So maybe leave a comment below or join my Discord server to give me your ideas about what else I could add to the game. Maybe you are also making a voxel game engine and maybe we can all help each other. I will also leave a link with my project on GitHub in the description. If you reached this point of the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and add a green square emoji to your comment to confuse everyone else. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!